Howdy folks. Welcome to video number two for Laws of Exponents. All right, let's dive right in. This, oh, I should tell you, I mean, we're coming to you today from in front of your local police station because uh, we're doing laws. I'm realizing that this is backwards behind me. That's a nice, nice touch. Okay, law number three is a to the nth power in parentheses to the m power is a to the n times m power. So in your head, you should think groups of, and you should multiply the exponents. Let's see again why that works. And you'll see why it's important to know the why in a second here. All right, so if you had this, the way you think about parentheses is a group. So this is a group of three x's, and this is going to be that group of three x's multiplied by itself four times. And so if you actually wrote that out, it would look like that. X to the third times X to the third times X to the third times X to the third. Since these little uh, parentheses are basically just multiply, right? There's like tiny little dots in there, which means to multiply. And you can take those parentheses off because this is all multiplication and write it out. And that's X to the third. There they are. Another X to the third another x to the third, and another x to the third, which gives us x to the 12th power. And then we say, oh, please, let me be able to not have to show all of this stuff, right? Well, you can skip showing all that stuff because three times four is 12. Okay. Now, we don't wanna write this out, right? We don't wanna write a multiplied by itself 30 times and then do it again realize that we have 60 of them, we can see that we would have 60 of them. This is two groups of 30. So that's a to the 60th power. Super sweet. All right, now, again, this is five groups of t to the two thirds power. So we just apply the law now. Uh, it's got moved up there, but that means I need to go five times two thirds. So we're gonna have a little side work over here. If I gave you the fraction problem, pre-calculus students, five times two thirds, you should think to yourself, that's five over one times two over three. We look and see, does anything reduce? No, five and three don't cancel, two and three don't cancel, so I'm safe now to just multiply this straight across and multiply this straight across. And when I do that, I would get t to the 10 thirds power, and that right there would be my final answer. Let's put a oval around it. Any lips? Okay, that's probably not an actual mathematical ellipse. Uh, okay, so it's really easy to get them mixed up. This is why I spent time in these videos not just showing you the law, but telling you why they worked, right? Actually going back and thinking what do these things mean so that when you see something like this back to back on a test, right now in isolation, they seem easy, but you could see yourself on a test looking at this and being like, oh, X to the third times X to the fourth, I need to go three times four and accidentally doing the wrong thing for the wrong problem and not remembering that this is X to the seventh and this one is X twelfth. Sorry, my typing was a little loud there. I was aggressively typing, I apologize. All right, laws four and five are basically the same law. Um, I, I think these these as being the fairest laws. So if you look at how the law is constructed right here, it says if you have different bases being multiplied inside the parentheses to a power, just each of those bases gets that power. Same thing for division. There's no difference on if um, the bases are being divided or the bases are being multiplied. So those are the fairness laws in my head. And for me, I just say, all right, be fair. Everything gets to get this exponent. It's kind of like distrib distributing, distributing. Yes, put the emphasis on the right syllable. So I'm going to get x to the 10th, m to the 5th, because this little 5 has to multiply by that 2 to create 10, and the 5 has to multiply by the one to create a five right there, right? All right, uh, you know, as they get 
bigger. They're not any tougher. They're just more spots to accidentally make a mistake. I need to force my brain to think about this T as not having a fourth. I know when it's right next to that K, it sometimes looks like that's TK to the fourth. But I need to make myself realize, again, through whatever method I need to, that that's really T to the first times K to the fourth right there. So now I just give that three to each of those guys and I get P to the 15th, T to the third, K to the 12th. All right, beautiful, easy. It's fun. Hey, there's another picture of me. All right, I would like you to at this point, pause the video and try this problem on your own. Just get a piece of scratch paper and try it. This is all of the laws that we've taught so far. One, two, three, four, five, all together in one problem. Do something, see what happens. I'll see you back on the other side. Okay, welcome to the other side. The beautiful thing about this is we are doing exponent problems. Everything in these problems is in exponents. So if you think about that little mnemonic device that you learned way back when, MDOS, this tells you the order in which you need to do a problem, right? Well, every single problem that we're doing has all of the operations trapped in the E, and so the order doesn't matter. So if you look what I've done here on this problem, going down this left-hand side, the first thing I did was distribute that exponent of a three to all of the bases. Again, making sure that that D had a one on it, so it becomes a three. The next thing I did, was combine the numerator. And I looked and I was like, oh, I've got a P to the 12th and a P to the third, that turns into a P to the 15th. Same thing on the denominator. I had W showing up twice, so that's W to the 27th. And then I just cancel, I use law two. The W's cancel, there's 21 leftovers on the bottom, the P's cancel, 12 on the top, the D's cancel, nine on the bottom, the M's completely cancel each other out. Somebody else might have done it this way and said, eh, I'm gonna work from the inside out instead of the outside in. And so again, looking at the numerator here, I had a P to the fourth and a P, those turn into a P to the fifth. My W's and the denominator combined to give me W to the ninth. Then I canceled to get this, and then I gave the fair share, the three to everything on the inside, and I get to the same answer. Look, they totally match up. That's pretty awesome. All right, folks, I believe that that is video number two, and that's the end of it, and we will hit you up on the next video with law number six. Uh, I hope you're all doing well, enjoying learning some math at home. Uh, there's a Delta math assignment that's posted in there, and you can get that done over the next couple of days. All right.